Hello and welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and in this video I'll show you how to take a really large document in Illustrator and then tile it so you can print it across multiple pages on a regular desktop printer. The print dialog box in Illustrator has changed a bit over the last few versions, so first I'll show you Illustrator CC and then we'll take a look at CS5. So let's get started. So here I am in Illustrator CC and here's my large document. If I select the Artboard tool, you can see that it's 72 inches long by 10 inches high. And in fact, I'm viewing this at 20%, so this is a really big file. So to print it, of course, I'll go to the File menu and choose Print. The first thing I want to do is choose my printer. You can see that I just have an inexpensive Canon desktop printer. Under the General section, if I had more than one Artboard, I'd want to click Ignore Artboards. But since I only have the one, I can leave this unchecked for now. But if you have more than one, you'll want to check this box. Over on the left is the thumbnail of what the printed output will look like. Now, since my document is 72 inches by 10 inches and my media, that is the size of my paper, is just regular US letter size paper, it's not going to look so great because only one section of the art is going to be printed on this one page. So to tile it, I go over to the scaling drop down menu here in the options section and choose Tile Full Pages. And now you can see in the thumbnail that the image is spread across 14 different pages of 8.5 by 11 inch paper. Now ultimately I'm going to cut these up and I want to paste them together, so I'm going to choose to have the image overlap a little bit on each page. And this way I don't have to be super careful with my cutting and I can set up as much or as little overlap as I want to here. I could have also have chosen Tile Imageable Areas, but that's for printers that can print all the way to the edge of the paper, which mine can't. So if you have a printer that will do a full bleed, print all the way to the edge, you can choose Tile Imageable Areas. And it looks slightly different in the thumbnail, and you'll notice that the overlap is grayed out, because you don't need to overlap it because they butt up against one another. But since my printer doesn't do that, I'm going to stick with Tile Full Pages. So as we can see in the thumbnail, this image is spread out across 14 different 8.5 by 11 pages. But my document is only 10 inches high, so I can change the orientation here in the middle of the dialog box and rotate it so now I'm only using 9 pages. So not only do I have to do less cutting and pasting, but it saves paper too. So make sure to experiment with the orientation so you get the most economical print job. Once you've got everything set up the way you want it, you can go ahead and press Print or you can press Done. And when you click Done, what that does is just save all these settings that you've already set up. So I can close the print dialog box now, and the next time I open it with this document, all of those settings will be saved. So if you're not ready to print just yet, you can click Done, and when you're ready, go ahead and click Print. So as I said in the beginning of the video, the dialog boxes are slightly different in different versions of Illustrator. So here I am in Illustrator CS5, and I'll go back up to the File menu and choose Print. All of the information is pretty much the same, it's just in a slightly different place. So here's my printer, and then under the General section, again, I might want to check Ignore Artboards if I had more than one, but I still just have the one, so I'll leave that blank. And now here at the bottom under Options, the Tile option is actually its own radio button. It's not hidden under a drop-down menu as it is in Illustrator CC. So I'm going to check that, and now I have the option of selecting full pages or imageable areas, again, depending on what kind of printer I have. I can also change the orientation here in the center of the dialog box, and the overlap can be adjusted in increments of an eighth of an inch. So again, depending on how handy you are with the scissors, you want to adjust the overlap setting. I might also choose to print only a section of the image, so I can click Tile Range, and I have nine tiles, nine pieces of 8.5 by 11 paper, and let's say I just want to print the right half of the image, I can change the range from 1 to 9 to, let's say, 5 to 9. So I'm only printing the four pages on the right. And again, I can click Done to save these settings, or go ahead and click Print if I'm ready to print. So this is all pretty much the same in both versions. I can also choose to save this as a postscript file. So under the Printer drop-down, rather than choosing my printer, I can choose Adobe Postscript file, and you'll notice that the word Print changes to Save. So if I click Save, I can save this as a Postscript file. 
and then I can take that postscript file and convert it to a PDF. So if you wanted a PDF instead of a hard copy, you could choose to do that. And here I have the PDF open in preview. You could also open it in Adobe Reader, but you can see the individual pages of the PDF here. Tiling an image this way comes in handy if you need to make a poster size print or a large stencil or any other oversized output. Rather than taking the file to a printing company or a service bureau, this can be a quick and cheap way to print on your own desktop printer at home.